We're all finally finishing up our first playthroughs of Andromeda here at Mass Effect Follower, and as such the post Mass Effect Blues are taking hold once again. We're all dealing with it in our own ways. Some are starting new playthroughs straight away, others take refuge in the multiplayer mode. Lying awake all night crying is probably another popular option. But our new favourite panacea for weeks of that classic Bioware emotional trauma is to research some lore. So today we're going to explore the first new alien race in the Mass Effect series in years. Let's discuss our new friends, the Angara. Before we begin, it's worth noting that since Mass Effect Andromeda is barely a month old at the creation of this video, information on the Angara isn't entirely comprehensive just yet. More will be added in the coming months and even years, so we may put out an updated video eventually, but for now here's what we got. And it goes without saying that this video will be filled with minor spoilers, so you have been warned. So here's a bit on the Angara's biology. Being a bipedal mammalian species, the Angara share a few similarities with our friends from the Milky Way. Namely the blue blood of the Turians and the general leg shape of both the Turians and Quarians. Their faces, while not exactly identical, also share a passing resemblance to those of humans and Asari. Aside from a generally familiar bone structure however, the common traits end there. One look at the Angara and you can easily pick out their distinguishing features. The first that comes to mind are the fleshy bits on each side of the head. At first glance you'd be forgiven for assuming they were separate tentacle-like appendages, but they are in fact fully attached from the head to the torso. One physical aspect that may go unnoticed by some is the Angaran eye. Nothing remarkable in terms of shape however, but they are a bit larger compared to humanoid species. But the real point of interest comes when you look into the eyes themselves. The eyes of an Angara almost resemble a satellite view of a lush garden planet. Locking your gaze with an Angara must be breathtaking, so you're going to have to get past the awkwardness of staring like a buffoon. Perhaps the most unique aspect of Angaran physiology is the exceptionally potent bioelectrical field present within each individual. It's so powerful, in fact, that it can be manipulated by its hosts and utilised in creative ways. This field is maintained by sunlight, resulting in a need for regular exposure to ultraviolet radiation among all Angara. Too much time spent away from a sun or an artificial source of energy results in the weakening of this bioelectrical field, which in turn weakens the host, eventually to the point of death. The Angaran ability to absorb sunlight in layman's terms likely helps to explain the species' durability in colder climates when compared to other sentient races. If for some reason you ignored our earlier warning about spoilers and are still watching this despite not yet finishing the game, this is your final warning, because things are about to get real. So few sentient races can claim to know their true origins. Oh sure, some can trace their roots back millennia and can even identify evolutionary ancestors, but nothing's ever so precise as to provide a clear answer on that subject. The Angara are a different story, because they were in fact created by another race. The Jardin, an ancient species of aliens from the Helios Cluster, actually manufactured the Angara centuries ago. Nothing is known about their reasons, and seeing as they've disappeared from the cluster, leaving only the ruins and machines known as the Remnant, finding out would provide to be a rather daunting task. After their creation, the Angara were placed on several worlds throughout the cluster, and grew their scientific knowledge rapidly. In fact, had it not been for the appearance of the Scourge, they may have advanced even further before encountering the Andromeda Initiative. However, the dark energy phenomenon was so deadly and unrelenting that it thrust them right out of their spaceflight era and into a century-long dark age. They quickly bounced back, however, soon rediscovering interstellar travel on several of their now-separated worlds. 
After establishing contact among the different planets such as Vold and Haval and discovering the new cultures that had developed, the Angara got to work uniting their people under a single government. While progress was made, this goal wasn't able to reach its full potential, as the invasion of the Ket halted much of the progress made by the Angaran people. In the early years of the attack, the shrewd tactics of the Ket managed to cripple their forces before they could even be fully mustered. Angara were deceived and set against each other, leading to their military power being sharply diminished by the time they knew who the real enemy was. By the time the Andromeda Initiative arrived in Helios, the military strength of the Angara had been mainly focused into a resistance, which had begun seeing progress against the Ket only relatively recently. However, the initiative's arrival also stirred up long brewing feelings of hostility towards outsiders thanks to the Ket, resulting in the rogue faction of Angara known as the Rokar, who attacked any non-Angara they came across. But enough about the depressing stuff, the Angara also have a rich culture, if a bit diminished thanks to the Ket assault. Emotion plays an important part in Angaran culture. Basically, think of a Vulcan from Star Trek, then picture the exact opposite. The Angara show emotions freely and liberally, with hugs and punches being not entirely uncommon among their people. The Ket themselves have also coloured Angaran culture in their own way, resulting in a general mistrust of outsiders. Hey, if your first experience with an alien consisted of enslavement and torture, you'd be wary too. Unless you're into that sort of thing, we won't judge. While not much is known about Angaran religious beliefs, we do know that Angara believe in reincarnation, with souls passing on through generations of each family. The interesting part here is that there may be some scientific basis to this belief, as there has been a lot of at least one instance of an Angara knowing things which could only have been known by one of their ancestors, whom they'd never met. While Angara culture developed in several directions at once during their full separation, it became unified over time after they came together again. One such example is their language. During their first scientific boom before the Scourge, the Angara had several different languages among them, with a different dialect called Shellish, used to communicate between those who didn't speak the same tone. Shellish was quickly abandoned after their cultural downgrade, before making a triumphant return as the various worlds rediscovered one another. And that's about it on what we have on the Angara. Our apologies if this video seemed rather bare bones compared to previous entries on other races we've done in this series. Remember, knowledge of the Angara is still in the early stages. As such, there is likely a rich store of information on them waiting to be discovered. We'll be on the lookout for it, and we hope you will be too. In fact, let us know any of your thoughts on the Angara in the comments below. Maybe there's something we missed, and hey, if you like this video and you want to see more, go ahead and like it and hit that subscribe button whilst you're there. And we'll see you next time here on Mass Effect Follower. Goodbye everyone.